Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming. Well, I have the camp to myself again. Uh, weekends can be a, a challenge. There was nobody bad, it's just it's lots of people, lots of noise, and I love my solitude, so I had to put my earplugs in, headphones on, and just <laughs> for pretty much most of the weekend. Even the hiking trails were really bad, and I couldn't make any videos because everybody was, there were kids at every play yard, you know, that's fine. I'm glad that they're out, finally can get out and enjoy after this winter. So I'm, I'm happy for them. It's just, it makes things difficult from the way I'm used to. So, I mean, I got a couple of videos ahead before that because I anticipated. I'm going to start having to anticipate more. I've got my next three locations booked. The fourth one, I don't know where I'm going yet because it seems to be a busy weekend. So sometime this next week I gotta find my fourth location. So I'm booked up till the 17th of March. After that I don't know where I'm going. You know, I've always allotted the possibility that I could not find a weekend spot in which case I'd have to go get a motel room, but I don't want to spend the money on that if I don't have to. So much better outside anyway. I don't want to be inside. If I wanted to be inside, I'd go get an apartment. I'd like this. All right. Speaking of living and where we're going to live, the focus once again and continually is on Israel. Everything else that's going on in the world, it doesn't matter. What's going on here in the United States doesn't matter. What's going on in England doesn't matter. From the point of view of God, his chosen people and his promised land that he promised Abraham. That's how far back it goes. So when the Muslims say it's their land, God gave it to them. And they believe in God, just the wrong God. God gave it to them. Back in Genesis 17, I guess, I think it's what's that. Yeah, Genesis 17, the Abraham covenant, or Abram covenant, covenant at that time. So anyhow, and the only reason, I think I've mentioned this before, the only reason that it's even called Palestine on any maps is that's what the Romans did. why people have to stop and look at the sign. <clears throat> it says it's closed when the gate's closed. That's the access down below to the public area. All my campsites around me are, are empty. The one next to me had a little girl and she was cute, but non-stop, non-stop. Okay, I'm glad that we get to be parents when we're younger and our nerves have not been, you know, shredded to pieces through our lives. Okay, where was I? The Promised Land, Israel. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a history, uh, quick overview history of Israel. And why it's foolish that the Arabs are even pretending. They know they're lying. They know flat out they're lying. They know their own history. But when they come out and say it's always been theirs, it's a lie. The Romans renamed it Palestine after they, after they conquered the Israelites in 70 AD, destroyed the temple, killed over a million, scattered them abroad, they renamed it Palestine, so the hopes that they would never come back. Yeah. Nobody wants to be king to a country that has a God. And a God who always takes care of them. I keep looking around because I hear noises and I keep trying to find critters. We've had rain off and on. It rained a little bit yesterday and the day before. Not a lot, but the critters don't come out. 
think I had an armadillo last night, but I didn't feel like getting up. All right, you've seen enough armadillos anyway. I need to go someplace with bears. I tried to show you alligators, but it was too cold down there. I'll have to go back. Now, I was there before last year. And if you look around, I might, I don't know how I, I don't always label them properly. I label them based on the thought for the day for that, for that video. I don't always say the thought for the day at Okefenokee Swamp. I could start putting locations in. The problem is I don't want people to know where I'm currently at. I do occasionally get crazies on the page and I don't want anybody showing up. Most of you are not a problem at all. I'd welcome a visit, but the crazy people can stay away. I don't want them to find me. That's that truck that went by earlier. He's going back again. Okay. So anyhow, God give the land, Canaan, to Abram and his descendants. Okay. So this is all there, but there's, there's deceit coming up. You know, we know the story of Jacob and becoming Israel and Joseph being sold, you know, into slavery. And then that, that's how they get into Egypt. It's promised to them, but they're not paying attention. One's selling his birthright. You know, they're not behaving very well. And so they kind of lost out on some time. So then they get into slavery in Egypt. And they were really doing good there for a long time. But then you get rid of one king and you replace him with a bad one. We're going to see that later on when Solomon dies and his son Rehoboam takes over. That kind of causes a problem too. That's the problem with, with man. We don't live as long as God. And trying to pass on the belief system from one generation to the next doesn't work. You've seen these tricks on TV where they... I'm going to try to keep these pages in order. This wind is being a pain. Put that on it. Um, where they do these tests, they tell, you know, they get find 25 people and they tell each... They tell the first one a story and then that person has to tell the next and then they have to tell the next and then the last one has to come to the camera and tell us what the story is. And there's nothing connecting the first story to the last story. That's how we are. And that's how my mind works anyway, too. I don't, rem I don't remember things. It is not a problem. I don't have a disease. I don't have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's. It's just the way my brain works. My brain makes very quick snap decisions based on long-term thought. When I go to the store, I go in, buy what I'm going to get, come back out. I don't shop. I've already done the mental shopping. I've already thought about what I want. I've already read all the reviews. So when I go to buy, I'm going to buy that piece. Now, some people just love to go shop all day long and maybe never come home with anything. Well, I've always very logically buy something. Okay. But that's just the way my brain works. So don't worry about me. I don't have any medical conditions that haven't already been fixed. Now, my mother had dementia, but my father didn't. Now, are you going to tell me which gene carries that? I don't know. I don't think it matters. I don't think we've got more than a year or two. And like we've been doing the last year, every year for the past five, six years, it's got to be this year. Well, we're all saying that, and it keeps, time keeps slipping, but we're continuing to see this crescendo building. We're not going to get out of here. Why would we, why would he get us out of here right now? There's no reason to rapture us right this second, <clears throat> unless there's nuclear bombs coming down to rain on us here in a little bit, and we just don't, haven't been told about them. That's the correlation that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a catastrophic event, and that's why we're going to be raptured. <clears throat> Satan's going to deliver this big blow. He really wants to get rid of Israel. 
Revelation 12 sign. He wants to get rid of the mother and the child. We're the child. We're going to be removed, and then he's going to go after the mother, and then God is going to protect Israel. Okay, <clears throat> so let me look at my notes, because I tend to ramble, and if I don't look at my notes, I'm going to ramble all over the place, and you won't know what I said when I get done. Okay, <clears throat> like I said, this is a history of Israel and the Promised Land. They finally get a Savior in Moses. Let my people go. He's got a lot of power given to him by God. He's a spokesman. He's got his brother Aaron in there to actually do the big talking because Moses didn't want to talk. Unlike Charles Heston. So he finally convinces him to go. It takes Passover to do that. We're coming up on that. So we're going we're gonna to learn about Passover next month. I can push it off till then, but we're going to touch on it here. You can't touch anything in the Bible without retouching pieces of it because they're all connected. God wove all this together and it's perfect. Perfect tapestry. Okay, so they get released. They get away from the Egyptians. The Egyptians get killed. They get into the desert area. It's just an escape resting place. They sent spies in, and we can cover this on another another video. I can't go into every detail too much. It would be, be four hours. They sent spies into the promised land of Canaan to report back. All but two said, Oh, these big, bad, terrible people would kill us, and we would be all wiped out, and why would we go to all this trouble to be freed from Egypt just to go die in the promised land? Little faith. They just got freed from Egypt by miracles. They got to see all the plagues and everything. I don't know. Two said it was okay, but <clears throat> they were outvoted, and God said, well, fine. If you don't think you can trust me to take care of you, this generation's not going to see the promised land. So they wandered in the desert for 40 years. They continued to get miracles. They were fed by manna. Then they wanted meat. They got quail. They got water coming out of rocks. The first time when Moses hit the rock, water came out. There, was, there had to be at least a million people leave Egypt. So there's a lot of them in the desert. Okay, He didn't get to go to the promised land because he didn't follow God. God said, speak to the rock the second time. And he was frustrated with the people of Israel. And he hit it with his staff. And God says, since you didn't do what I told you to do, they got water, but you can't enter the promised land. He got to stand on the hilltop and look down as Joshua led everybody in and across the Jordan. You know, I don't care who you are. Moses was denied the promised land because of his behavior. Don't think you're ever too big for God. Okay, <clears throat> so... Jerusalem, here we go, which would basically be Israel. We'll get into the little bit of division here in a little bit, but these are just some numbers. Jerusalem was uh, captured 52 times, recaptured 44 times, besieged 23 times, and destroyed uh, two times. It was destroyed. Now, what eventually happens is, like I said, when Solomon die, dies and his son Rehoboam takes over, he increases the taxes. The people didn't like that. So they split. Ten, times, ten tribes stayed north. Two tribes stayed in the south with Jerusalem. That became Judah. So Judah and Benjamin stayed south. The other ten tribes went north, soon to become the lost ten tribes because they didn't have a temple. Forgot about that. Okay. <clears throat> so Solomon's death around 925 BC. So that tells you where kind of where we're at. We're coming up on it. 
and you can find this in uh, Kings 11, 31 through 35. So his son put on heavy taxes. They revolted. Um, Israel was the north. Judah was the south. Divided into two. A kingdom divided will not, will not last. And since the temple was in the south, where do you think the temple guards were? Where do you think the best troops were in the south? They couldn't defend themselves in the north. And that showed up almost immediately. Um, there was more population in the north, but they didn't have the defenses. They didn't have a walled city of Jerusalem. So they lasted till around 721 BC when they were defeated by the Assyrians. And no more. They're all gone. Judah's still there. And it managed to, to survive until around 588 BC when Babylon comes in. Babylon's around today. Same Babylon. Babylon came in with Nebuchadnezzar as their king and they conquered him. Damaged the temple. Killed a bunch of people. Took everybody else captive. And that continued until, well, for 70 years it continued. And then King Cyrus from Persia conquered Babylon. And when he did, he didn't want all the people to manage, so he told the Israelites that they could go back and rebuild their temple, 586 B.C. There's the start of the 70th week calculation. Remember to calculate it with a Jewish calendar. There's times when it's switched, so you, that people have already done this. The end of the 69th week was the day Jesus rode into town on a donkey. And then with him being crucified and the Gentiles getting their chance, we've been in a, quote, church age ever since. And it's about to end. We're in the church age. So the things that happen are church age events. We're not going to have a rapture tied to a Jewish event. Now, if I were to pick a date, and I'm not picking a date, but if I were to guess on a date, I'd say that it would probably be coming up would be Easter, which happens to be in the middle of the Passover week. But again, I mean, we're told it could be imminent, but I look around, it's so peaceful here. You can hear the birds in the background. There's a, a light cloud. There's a half moon directly overhead. I don't know if I can, if you can see that or not. Is that it? Yeah. There's the moon. Yeah. The camera on this doesn't have the ability to... You can zoom in, but it, it's, it's hard. You have to work it with the thumbs. If I had a ring on a camera, I could actually zoom in better, or even a button. But anyhow, you can see so I have a very pleasant day to be out here doing this. <clears throat> okay. So, King of Persia releases them. They don't all go back. They don't all go back. And they basically go back to Judah. They don't go back to Israel yet. They go back in, they rebuild, they cobble the temple back together. It never looked as good as it did then. It won't look good again until Herod comes in and rebuilds it because he wanted a legacy for himself. Okay. Um, Israel was created as a state out of, I guess, eh, people were sorry for the Holocaust. They were sorry that the Jews were killed six million Jews, plus six million other people, which most people don't, don't hear about. They were aghast when they found out. They got together, the UN got together, 
and said we should give them a country. So they approved it in 47. All the paperwork, you know, how governments work, all the paperwork was done, the constitution that they used, everything that they needed was done by May 14th, 1948, and that's when they became a nation, at midnight, May 14th. Okay, they didn't have Jerusalem yet. They didn't give it to them. Because of the disagreements of who owned what, they didn't get it. Now, God wanted them to get it. God's promised them a lot more land. So he convinced their enemies, primarily Egypt, Syria, and Lebanon, on their three sides, convinced them to attack. Well, when Israel defended themselves, they beat them back further than the lines that they originally had, and that's how they got Jerusalem. They've got the uh, West Bank. They got pretty much what you know today. Now, we've, they've given some of it back based on our stupid presidents who believe that you could negotiate out of good faith. The worst president we had dealing with the Middle East was Jimmy Carter because he was a nice man. And these people over there have been fighting amongst themselves for thousands of years. They don't fight fair. And he wanted to fight fair. So, in any case, we give them land. No peace. We give them land again. No peace. Israel says that's enough. Now they're killing people in the streets of Jerusalem. The people of Israel fought back and went and burned down a whole bunch of Palestinian, Palestinian buildings today. It's the first time they've done that. They've had enough. They know the truth. The Muslims know the truth. And when the truth is finally accepted and believed and told by the Antichrist, then they will have the Temple Mount back because it never has belonged to them. It's all been a lie. It's all been a lie. Okay. What are we going to have coming up? Well, we know there's going to be some damage. We know there's going to be some destruction. We've got a Magog war coming after Israel. You're going to get the capital is going to get involved in it somehow. All their enemies have missiles all around them. We saw a couple years ago where they were launching missiles. 4,000 of them did very little damage. They've got a good defense system, but now they've got modern hypersonic missiles that are going to be hard to shoot down. They're trying drones as a cheap way because a drone, you can get a drone for 5,000 bucks, a good one that can do what it needs to do, whereas these hypersonic missiles might be a million or two. They don't want to be shooting those off. We shoot half a million dollar missiles at balloons, which is absolutely, again, stupid. But that's our current government. All right. Now, I want to read a little bit about what's coming to Israel. This is the f final piece of Israel, not what's coming. What's coming is going to be disastrous, and the whole world is going to be destroyed. So why describe it anymore? Let's just skip ahead. We're going to go to, we're going to start in Ezekiel 47, then we're going to go to Revelation 22. That should tell you how far ahead we're going to go. Okay. He then brought me back to the door of the temple. This is uh, in Ezekiel 47, 1. Uh, and there was water flowing underneath the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate. He led me around the outside to the outer gateway. This is prophecy. This is Ezekiel. And there was run water running out of the right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. Cubit. Over a foot. Um... And he brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my ankles. And again he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. 
Again he measured 1,000, and it brought me through, and the water came up to my waist. Again he measured 1,000, and the river, uh, at that point, I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which I, uh, one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? And he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. And along the river were trees, many trees, and the water flows down into the Dead Sea, and it heals the water. Okay? That's coming. Now, that's Ezekiel 47. Now we're going to turn to Revelation 22. And he's getting his tour. We have the New Jerusalem um, in the previous chapter. And this is in 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the land in the middle of, its, of the street and on either side of the river was a tree of life, uh, which was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. Tree of life on all this fruit. The leaves of the tree were the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and there shall be no night there. There's no need for a lamp, nor light, nor sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever. So, that's the final Jerusalem. That's where the party's going to be. That's where we're going to have the final wedding feast. We don't have a wedding feast the day we go up on the rapture. we got too much work to do. We're going to be supporting whatever's going on down here. We're saints. We're going up there to be priests and saints to God. I don't know whether we're, I don't know how this works up there. Whether we can sit around and pray for what's going on down here, whether we find somebody on earth that we're assigned to, to be their keeper, to carry their messages to God. Pretty much kind of what we're doing down here, finding people that need help and telling them about God. So we're just going to continue helping people down here. These are people that didn't accept Christ on the first, first time it was challenged so they're going to miss the rapture but we got to help them to make the second one and then we got to get the last group to go there's more than one rapture i don't like discussing all the stuff in between because we're not going to be part of it down here not directly we're not going to be living in it anything that we own is gone when we get raptured so your possessions that you are fighting for to keep and possess are going to be gone. And then ultimately, you know, well, we got a thousand years down here. Is our stuff going to still be here? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going to happen. <coughs> I wouldn't expect it to be here. And ultimately, it's all going to be destroyed anyway. You get a new heaven and a new earth. It's like Peter says, you know, why would you slave for all this stuff just to have it burned up? You're going to get, you know, we're not suffering like Job, but we're kind of like Job, and that's why it's in the Bible. We can see that if you go through suffering, that God allows you to go through suffering. He didn't cause it. Satan did, but he allowed it, and that's why we have problems down here. He doesn't cause it, he allows it. And Satan's the one to carry it out, or one of his many emissaries. He's got too many people on his side. They've believed the lie that he can win. He believes the lie that he can win. We know he can't, because we have the Spirit of God teaching us the Bible. He doesn't have that advantage. 
He has his own logic and mind trying to read the Bible. And he keeps coming up with, I'm the winner. He never would have crucified Christ if he knew what the purpose was. He didn't know the Bible. We tell everybody that he knows the Bible. He knows the words. He doesn't know the meaning. And we're good for that. And that's why we don't know the day of the rapture. We can't know the day of the rapture because as soon as we know, he'll know. And the rapture is to protect us from him. So we can't know. We just have to be ready. Okay. That's all I have for this. Israel is still a vital piece of this whole thing. No replacement theology, people. You don't get rid of the Jews because they behave badly. And if that's what you think, whoever wants to cast the first stone, please step forward. Okay? They were given a break. They still have one week to go. Seven years. Heptat. And we're almost done. Let's get these last few souls out of here so we can get out of here. So keep working. These revivals are great. They're showing what we can do. But they're not to save the world. They're to save the last few souls. That's what, it's, what the revivals are for. So be a part of that. Help people. Get them over the line. So when we leave, no one gets left behind. God does not leave anybody behind. All right. Tell me meet in the clouds. God bless.